Holy smokers, folks. You gotta be flipping my flapjacks. This ain't no jokers. Here's a shot to all the investors who made it through the past five weeks in the market, okay? Because I can tell you, this is one of the worst five week periods we've had in the stock market ever. One of the worst. I mean, it's been absolutely a downpour of selling <laughs> on an epic scale. And there's so much I wanna share with you guys here today. There's some things I get, I'm gonna share with you that are absolutely shocking. There's certain things going on that we have not seen things this bad since the great financial crisis of 08, 09, okay? And we're, this gets into a big debate on are we really going into great financial crisis? Are we really at that level? Or is this just um, a lot of, let's call it scared uh, folks who are just like, you know, very scared about everything across the board, right? And are just in a very negative kind of mindset right now. So a lot to share with you guys here today. Hope you enjoyed it as always. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate y'all. And uh, let's get into this. Okay. First off, the NASDAQ since August 15th. And by the way, NASDAQ was down another 1.8% here today. NASDAQ is down 17.2% since August 15th. That's ridiculous, okay? Yeah, not many times you've ever seen the NASDAQ fall that much in that short of a period of time. Ridiculous, okay? The Russell 2000 since August 15th is down almost 17%. 16.87%. Russell today was down another 2.5%. At one point today, Russell was down like getting close to 4% at one point today. It was really, really ugly for the Russell. The S&P 500, big dog, since August 15th is down over 14%. My gosh, five weeks go by and it's just a <laughs> obliteration, okay? And, and these numbers I'm reading to you, I mean, if these were for a full year, it would be a disaster. I mean, this, this is for a five-week period, okay? Now, look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. This is very important. The Dow Jones just took out the June bottom here today okay it happened it blew through that june bottom now none of the other indexes have basically blown through their june bottoms yet however all of them are very close the nasdaq is about roughly maybe two percent away two and a half percent away from reaching a new june you know a new bottom since june the russell's are right around the same about two percent away or so s p 500 very 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 close for the s p 500 but there you had the dow jones industrial average but remember the dow held up the best in that crash why did it hold up the best in the first uh, cycle of crash well, the reason was oil and gas stocks, which makes up a lot of the Dow components, were actually holding up pretty fairly decent, to be quite honest. They were, they were, they were holding up pretty decent at that time. That's no longer the case. Oil and gas stocks are getting absolutely obliterated now, which is bringing down the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which is, you know, the Dow is not, if you're super into the market, the Dow is not the base index you look at. However, to be quite frank, the Dow is the biggest index the masses look at. That is what the masses look at. The people that are super into the market, we're usually either looking at S&P 500 or we're looking at the NASDAQ. But I'm telling you, for the masses, they look at this number. And the fact that we just went under 30K definitely gets everybody's attention. Like, whoa, what happened? We went under 30K. What's going on here? Okay. So very intriguing what's, what's transpiring there now at this point in time. You know, there's not much positivity uh, that we can give out there. But one of the few is a good old Fubo stock, the greatest stock in the history of mankind, up a whopping 65% from the June bottom, essentially. At least something's gotten better. Basically, every single stock has gotten massively worse, almost every single one. But hey, Fubo, you know, I guess we can all just uh, go all in Fubo and, and make money or something like that. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. Meta. Meta has lost over $500 billion of market capitalization this year. Over $500 billion. This stock is now down, all, you know, 58%. It hits new 52-week low day after day after day after day. Sometimes I just have to remind myself, and I'm, I'm just like, because I bought this stock here today. I'll show you the other stocks I bought here today. I bought this stock yesterday. I buy it every day and it hits a new 52-week low every day. And sometimes I just have to remind myself. And so I'm just like, what am I buying here, okay? Well, I'm buying all the most popular apps in the entire world. Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp, Messenger. All the most popular apps in the world are owned by Meta. And the only one that's not, oh, that's a big, huge beast, and this is funny, because... TikTok, people forget that this still has real potential to get banned in the United States and in, in Europe as well, potentially over time, but in the United States specifically, right? If that happens, do you know what happens to Meta stock overnight, right? Now, I'm not banking on that. Meta is a moneymaker over the coming years, no matter what, regardless of TikTok. But just imagine for a moment if that was banned. Hmm. That could be interesting, okay? You know, 
why why are all our companies not allowed in China? You know, when it comes to all our social networks and things like that, why can't Meta be? Why is it why is it that Meta can't be in China, but yet TikTok can be in the United States? What's up with that, right? Why should TikTok be able to take all our users' data? Why should TikTok be allowed to, you know, um, run all these ads and, and make a bunch of money when, when Meta's not allowed to do that and Google's not allowed to do that? Now, that doesn't seem quite fair, does it now? Okay. AMD. Oh, my gosh. Okay. This is just, it's getting bad, bad. I mean, AMD's now down almost 55% year to date. And, you know, when you look at this stock, where's the bottom? I have no clue where the bottom is for AMD. I mean, if this stock was 55, you know, before you know it, I wouldn't be surprised. It's just, you, you, you have no clue. And when it comes to AMD's actual, here's the problem. AMD has two parts. One is no one wants to own these sorts of stocks right now. The other is real questions about the demand for AMD's products. That's when you get into fundamentals. So you have, you know, a messy technical situation mixed with potentially bad fundamentals in 23. That's the belief that AMD, NVIDIA, all these companies are going to have bad numbers in 2023 compared to 2022 and especially compared to 2021. So when you have that all compounded with no one wanting to take risk right now, especially from the big money side, oh boy, okay, it makes for a very ugly situation. And I mean, that stock, it's just, it hits new 52-week low after new 52-week low. Intel fits the same exact criteria. Look at this one, now down over 48%. Intel down another 2% here today. I mean, you know, it doesn't matter that Intel's trading at a 5P ratio. It doesn't matter what Intel's dividend uh, yield is. It just everybody's so convinced that their business is going to get much worse and no one wants to own these these sorts of stocks right now. If you sell, you know, CPUs, GPUs, it doesn't matter what you sell. In that whole realm, no one wants any piece of those right now. You know, second half of 2023 it could be a fully different situation. Second quarter of 2023 it could be a fully different situation. But for right now, no one wants any piece of these stocks. A little glimmer of hope is NVIDIA here today was only down a little bit, okay, 0.36%. But do keep in mind, NVIDIA has been the worst of that bunch. It has been worse than Intel. It has been worse than AMD. They've all been a disaster. But, in, you know, NVIDIA has been the, the, the most bad of the, the bunch, right? But here today, hey, you know, maybe a glimmer of hope that it only went down 0.36%, you know, which was far better than most of the stocks and the indexes in general. Adobe also maybe can give you a little hope here. This is another one of those, you know, ultra hated stocks right now, down almost 50%. It's basically been cut in half this year, but the stock was only down 0.87% today. So, you know, I was looking out there at the market here today and I saw some of this going on. And sometimes you can see some of this if you pull up a heat map or something like that, or if you just have, you know, a good watch list, uh, you know, on, on whatever applications you use and things like that. And I was watching this and I was like, man, the indexes are so bad today, but there's a lot of stocks that aren't getting hit the way you would assume if you knew the index was bad. Like I, I, when I woke up today, I think the NASDAQ was down close to two and a half percent or two percent, something like that. Or Russell was down like three and a half percent. So I was expecting to see stocks like Nvidia, Adobe, those sorts of stocks down four, six, eight percent. And then to wake up and see you know, less than 1% for both of those. That was, that was intriguing. And there was ever the other stocks out there as well that were just, they weren't being hit. So that was kind of um, something to just kind of pay attention to, I guess you can say. Now, if you want some more good news, commodities are getting leveled right now. I mean, absolutely leveled. Almost all these commodities are at year lows. I mean, pretty much across the board, lumber, lumber, oats, WTI, almost everything. Um, you know, natural gas still has a long, long, long way to go there. So we're making progress there, making progress. We still got a long way to go. Okay. This is fascinating. If you pull up WTI, it's only up now 3% year to date. And that's kind of shocking. And it's interesting because, you know, throughout the summertime and, and when I would watch, you know, CNBC and stuff like that, you know, folks would go on there and they would talk about, you need to be buying oil and gas stocks, right? And all these folks are very, they usually go on, they're very short term in nature. They're not, they're not usually thinking out three to five years. They're thinking out about, you know, three to three to five months, if anything, or three to five weeks, right? And, you know, it was interesting because from what I saw from a lot of these folks that would go on is they had an overall bearish perspective, right? They had an overall bearish perspective, but then the flip side, they'd be saying you need to be buying oil and gas stocks. And that just never made sense to me because if you were really truly bearish and you think the economic environment's going to worsen, the financial conditions are going to worsen, why would oil go up in that situation? It's never happened before ever. So why would it happen now? 
If things are getting worse, oil price usually gets far worse, okay? So that just kind of, it, the whole thing never made sense to me, to be quite frank. And obviously, we've seen what's happened to oil price. It's just, got, it's just gone down and down and down. Now, if the economy is doing great and everything's going great, okay, then oil can go up in that sort of environment. But not in an environment where everybody's scared out of their minds, okay? And this is what's been going on. And you pull up the oil and gas stocks. Look at these moves. Apache down 11% today. Marathon down almost 11% today, BP 8.8%, Devon Energy 8.6%, ConocoPhillips 8.6%, Shell 8%, EOG almost 8%, right? Phillips 7%, Chevron 6.5%, Valero 6.5%, Chesapeake Energy, I didn't even know how they're still in. Is that Chesapeake Energy or is that a different CHK? I don't know. That's sketchy. Um, <laughs> Exxon Mobil 5.3%. Occidental Petroleum, 5%. Stocks have gotten absolutely obliterated. And they've been obliterated basically since June. You know, if you pull up a chart on any of these stocks, they've been absolutely wrecked. And, you know, it, going back to that whole thing, it's why it doesn't pay to, to hop onto the, the, hot, the hot thing at that, that particular moment because everybody was like, oh, you know, so hyped on oil and gas. And it's like, you know, all those stocks were at record highs. Oil was at unsustainable levels. And, you know, if you're going to talk about a worsening economic environment, financial conditions, this is no way oil is going to do well in that environment, man. It, it doesn't take a rocket scientist, in my opinion, to figure that out. Um, but, you know, that, that's what it is. And now it's like, what, what do you do with those moves? You know, because who wants to be in those stocks long term? No one wants to be in freaking oil and gas stocks long term. There's a million better opportunities that you're going to make way more money over the next five years in the oil and gas stocks. But, People are going to, are gonna, what, maybe t turn those trades into an investment. And as a trader, the number one thing you know is never turn a trade into an investment, right? So now you're going to be stuck holding those stocks with likely big losses. And where's the hope long term for those? Those aren't like these other companies that are growth companies and will grow regardless of the economic environment. Their stock price will go up, you know, 100%, 200%, 500%, 1,000% .000 over the next five years. Those aren't those sorts of stocks. Those will be flounder and fish that... Who knows what's going to happen there, okay? No one wants to play any of those stocks for the long term, okay? Now, Zillow is very telling. This stock getting very close to a new low for Zillow stock, and it's just very telling about what's going on in the real estate market. You know, the, the thing... The thing for 2022 I was most worried about going into this year was the middle class. The thing I'm most worried about for 2023 when we talk about going into that year is going to be real estate. And, you know, I just think it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. And I got a shocking number to show you in just a moment. But when it comes to Zillow stock, it's very clear. You know, Zillow stock could be an interesting play right before you feel like real estate's going to start getting things back together. So, you know, real estate's going to get much, much, much worse for at least the next six months, if not next 12 to 18 months. So Zillow stock's not a play, in my opinion, anytime soon. But right before you start to feel like you, there's going to be a turn in real estate, that's when it could get interesting. So maybe maybe second half of 23, maybe early 24, something like that. But look at this, okay? So let me take you inside, and just, I just want to show you a couple slides from the investor report we put out every week, okay? And this one just came out. First slide I want to show you is real estate. The 30-year mortgage is now at about 6.3%, okay? A year ago, it was at 2.8%. Real estate's going to get so much worse. I don't even think people have a conception or clue how much worse real estate's going to get in terms of new home sales, in terms of existing home sales, you know, it's going to get a lot worse. And in terms of price, like, like you know, a lot of people say, you know, price are being, you know, kind of persistent in a lot of markets. When do prices start to fall? Uh, prices are going to start to fall a lot, in my opinion, over the next few months, and especially in early 2023, because sellers eventually start to realize the situation. Real estate agents and brokers start to finally realize, okay, man, you know, they've kind of been in a state of denial for the past like four to six months of like, what's going on here? Homes aren't selling anymore. And they kind of been in this like state of denial of like, uh, I don't know, should we really start lowering prices? Let's just see how things shake out, okay? Mortgage rates continue to go up. The environment for buying real estate continues to get worse and worse and will continue to get worse. And so I think eventually everybody realizes the people that are selling the homes, means homeowners, and agents and brokers start to realize, oh crap, if we want any chance to sell a home, we have to start lowering price. The home builders also start realizing the lower end home builders are just finally starting to enact some, some price drops. There's going to be a lot more, okay? And by the end of it, all, every home builder is going to have to incentivize like crazy if they want even a, a glimmer of hope to sell a new home, okay? 
it's going to get far worse before it gets better in the real estate industry. I can tell you a lot much. Okay. It's just a big question is real estate continue to get worse for the next six months, the next 12 months or the next 18 months. I think it, to me, that's the only question in regards to real estate. Okay. This is shocking. Okay. But at the same time, it shouldn't surprise me because of how bearish things are. But look at this number. Almost 60, that's, almost, that's one of the highest numbers. If that's, that's the top five highest number I've ever seen in the history of the investor sentiment, which goes all the way back to the 1980s, okay? Top five biggest number I've ever seen. And this goes back, you could look at the historical data all the way back to the 80s, okay? The highest number I've ever seen in history was 70%, and that was the week before the stock market bottomed in March of 2009. That was the highest number I'd ever seen, okay? We're talking 60, almost 61% of investors are bearish on the stock market over the next six months. Incredible, an absolutely incredible number. We're, you know, we're basically double what we usually are. If that doesn't show you how bearish this market has gotten, I don't know what will. That is incredible. How There's just complete disbelief that the market can go up, that stocks can do well over the next six months, Everybody's just in the full camp, and it's pretty obvious when you look at the price action, right? Because you're not you're not seeing a bid for for these stocks. Like, well, like where's any sort of buying pressure? There's just no real buying pressure. The, the selling pressure every day just outweighs the buying pressure in almost all these stocks. You know, we talked about a stock like Meta at the beginning of this video, right? Look at Google, look at Microsoft. Every single stock, pretty much, almost out there in the market. It just has no buying pressure at all, man. Absolutely none. And the selling pressure just outweighs the buying pressure day after day after day. And the prices just drop, drop, drop. It's incredible. Absolutely incredible. Okay. Now, if you look at a stock like FedEx, you know, this stock is now 42 plus percent year to date, which is insane for a stock like FedEx, which is usually considered a, a less of a volatile stock than many stocks in the stock market. You know, if you look at a stock like FedEx, it's basically telling us recession. Recession is here. Okay. That's what the stock price is telling us recession is here. That's why I'm down 42%. But sometimes I just like to look out there and I say, is it, is, it, you know, what are we talking about here? Like, like how serious is this? Okay. So I listened to the Costco earnings call last night. Okay. The numbers from Costco were absolutely amazing. There was no recession in sight when you listen to that conference call. And when you look at the numbers for Costco, so that was just interesting. But on the flip side, so everybody says, you know, Costco is such a well-run company, such a beast that it doesn't matter the environment, Costco is going to put up numbers and do well. Fair play. Okay. So I, I, I went ahead and I listened to the latest investor conference from JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs. And both of these were done about a week and a half ago or so, a week ago, a week and a half ago. What I listened to in both those also told me there's not really anything right now that's going on of like, you know, real recession. Let's just call it that of like, oh boy, things are getting rough from either of those companies. So it's just an interesting thing, I think, uh, to kind of consider out there, right? You look at something like the iPhone orders. I mean, it looks to me like iPhone orders are coming in pretty dang strong. iPhone, in, in terms of everything I understand about the situation, their supply chain was already to rock and roll. They haven't had any hiccups and they got out ahead as far as production went. But still, like the dates are pushing big time in terms of all the, the ones that people actually want, right? But on the flip side, you can say, you know, you can always look at these things different ways. You can always say, well, you know, these people that have, you know, doing all these orders in September, you know, maybe that's people with a lot of money or diehard Apple fans, but you know, come October, November and going into next year, then we could be looking at a situation where the iPhone orders start to drop and the numbers just aren't there. And that's fair play, but it's just, it, it's interesting because we have so much fear built up in the system. Everybody's so convinced on being bearish and those sorts of things. But you know, when you look at just, when you listen to folks, when you look at the numbers, the recession, you know, in terms of real economic devastation, it's not here right now. It doesn't mean it can't come. It's just not here right now. But yet the market's pricing and acting like it is here right now. And that's where we get in this weird kind of divergence of like what's reality and, and what's, you know, just woo, that we're making up in our heads, right? And, you know, when you look at the NASDAQ down 17 plus percent in five weeks, that tells you economic devastation is here. But then when you look at numbers and when you hear what companies are saying and you read the, all of the tea tree leaves, it's not here. So it's like, what, 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 is, what is reality here, okay? And it gets very, very confusing. Then you add on potentially, you know, the bond market obviously being more competitive 
and more of an interesting place for people to put money or treasuries, things like that, which you know you could say is stealing money maybe from the stock market, which is definitely a potential. The VIX went super high today. I think we, you know, VIX uh, spiked at something like 32 today, which is interesting. Okay, so that's going on, right? I bought stocks here today. No surprise for me. Stocks market is down big. I'm buying stocks. This is bottom line. I don't stop. I'll buy. I'm as I said going into 2022. I'm buying this whole crash and I'll buy the whole crash out. You know, it's just me. I used uh, July and August as a time period where I cashed up as the market just kind of went up and up and up. And I'm very happy I did that because now I'm able to deploy all these funds at stocks that are at you know, this is called significant discounts. So I'm thankful I did that. But in terms of me, like, you know, for the remainder of this year, this is just buy, buy, buy everything in sight for, you know, let's just call it the, the next few months until, you know, this crash is kind of over with. So Meta, I bought some Meta shares here today at 139. I bought some Chef shares at 525. Uh, by the way, I'm still 100% confident in the Chef. I know I don't talk about it a lot, but I'm as confident as, as can be in that company. They got to put up their numbers over the next, you know, four quarters or so, though. They've got to show improving margins, improving profitability and improving cash flows. If they do that, their stock will be rewarded and it will be rewarded in an epic way. But they've got to do that. They've got to put up the numbers over the next few quarters. If they don't put up the numbers, then we're, we're stuck at you know these crap prices for all of eternity. Okay, Google McDougal, I bought 10 shares of Google, 90, uh, 98.88. I bought 78 shares of Corsair at 11.87. That's ridiculous. Gaming's about to go through another um, big bull cycle, but Wall Street doesn't quite see it yet, and that's perfectly fine with me. Uh, I don't even want to talk about that too much. Amazon, I uh, bought 8 shares of Amazon at 113. And then Oatly, got 555 shares of Oatly at 267. And that's pretty darn laughable. That's all I'll say about that. But Oatly's in the same exact category that the chef is. They have to show improving margins and improving profitability and cash flows over the next four quarters. If they can do that. Oatly will be $10 plus before you know it. And the chef will be back to $15, $20 stock. But they got to show that. If they don't show that, they're going to be stuck at these crap prices for you know a while. They've got to show the numbers there. Great thing for Oatly specifically. Well, for both these companies, container costs coming down massively, transportation costs coming down massively for both these two, that's going to help margins and profitability out in a major, major way. On top of that, they've both done a lot of cost initiatives over the past couple quarters that are going to come through. And for Oatly specifically, oat price has crashed. Okay. And that's the main, that's the main ingredient other than water that goes into their product. So their, their margins of profitability are going to increase in my opinion, dramatically over the next several quarters. And you'll start to see that, especially two quarters out. And, uh, yeah, I mean, with those sorts of stocks, like they have to put up the numbers and they put up the numbers of stocks are going to, I mean, the move will be dramatic and it will be fast, but they've got to put up the numbers. So that, that's an important thing to kind of remember there. Okay. So in terms of the market, it's got two to three weeks left here of uh, no man's land, which, you know, we're no man's land and it's bearish land right now. So the bears have, I spoke about this in, in detail last night. They have all the bricks on the bearish side right now. We have none. We, we can't even imagine to get some back until earnings season comes. And as if earnings can come in, kind of like Costco came in and be decent, or actually uh, Costco numbers are actually great, um, but we just need decent numbers from companies. You know, the stock market will make an absolutely epic move. Uh, you know, let's just call it at the end of October and into November and December, and we'll get that. Um, there's a call pretty epic rally. But yeah, I mean, if, if numbers came in disastrous, which I don't think they are, just based upon everything I'm seeing, I don't think we're going to have a disastrous earnings season, to be quite frank. You know, if we do, we do. Uh, I'm ready for it, but I just don't think it's going to happen. I think earnings are actually going to come in pretty decent. I think some earnings are going to come in good. Shock Wall Street. And uh, it's going to be up, up, and away. We'll see how it all plays out. But, uh, you know, I'm just going to continue to add aggressively over this, this next few weeks of, of No Man's Land. And uh, then we'll play with it how it goes from there. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, hey, if you never said hi to me on Instagram, say hi to me sometime. Send me a DM. I'll get back to you and say hello. Okay? So I appreciate all you guys for being here. As always, much love and have a great day.